Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Real World. Today I'm going to be looking at another in a ever-growing collection of stereoscopic devices, the Samsung Gear VR Innovator Edition. Don't know what really makes it an Innovator Edition. I would assume that's just because it's the first one. I don't know, maybe we're beta testing it and they just decided not to tell us. I don't know. Maybe it's just because we're on the bleeding edge of technology. <clears throat> now, what is the Samsung Gear VR? Well, it's Samsung's answer to the Google Cardboard. They basically looked at the Google Cardboard and went, hey, look, we can do that too, but we can make it less useful and more expensive. It's more expensive because it costs $200 as opposed to the co Cardboard's 25 bucks if you want to spend the big bucks on Amazon. And it's less useful because it only works with the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Okay, so my brand new phone. And now you know why I spent way the hell too much money on a brand new phone. Yes, I appear to be getting a little obsessed with this whole stereoscopics thing. <sniffs> nah, whatever. So... Let's take a look at the device since, you know, that's what it gets down to. Is it worth the $200 plus the, what, $750, $850 for the phone? Well, let's get started. What do we get with the thing? Obviously, we get a fancy box, which at this point I'm not even going to bother looking at because the, all the boxes are, at this point, the same. They're all the fancy boxes that are duplicating off of Apple's design. So let's just, I'm just going to completely ignore that because screw it. We get the Gear VR itself, which I will get to in a moment. We get this nice semi-solid case for it that doesn't fit back in the box. Seriously, I pulled it out of the box. I can't get it back in the box. It, it, it's, it's like the sleeping bags. You can never roll it back up and put it back in the bag it came out of. I don't, I don't understand. But we got a lot of neat little things to go with it as well. What is in it, we got an extra poofy thing for the face padding, which is really nice that they gave you extra in case the first one wears out. We get the standard getting started guide that I did flip through, though it turned out to be utterly worthless as is most getting started guides for most overly technical people like myself, we get one of these micro fabric cloth things, you know, for cleaning optics and stuff. You get them with like, well, you get them with both versions of the Oculus Rift. You get them with a lot of cameras and stuff like that. Really nice addition in case you don't have one because you have optics to worry about. And, and I love this. You get a micro SD card plus a micro SD card to SD adapter, which is really awesome. Now, this isn't even that small of an SD card. It's a 16 gig micro SD card. Now, that's not terribly expensive. It's, it's really not. But what's really cool about it isn't that they gave it to you. Okay, that would be neat. Okay, we can put all of our, you know, new 3D information onto the SD card instead of directly on our phones. We can save some space. What's really cool is that the applications required to run the Gear VR are on this SD card for you. That's actually part of the install or part of the setup process is that it will tell you to take your phone out and put in the micro SD card that came with it. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I do not use the micro SD card. I keep it in its case protected just in case I have to reload it somewhere else. I copied all of the files onto the 32 gig micro SD card that I already had in my phone. So there's no like copy protection or DRM or crap like that that you have to worry about, which I think is really awesome. Um, mostly because then I could do something like that where I can throw all the stuff on my 32 gig SD card instead of being stuck with their 16 gig, which is really nice. So we'll sit the phone to the side here for a moment because we're not going to get to that just yet. So let's take a look at the device itself. All right, so it looks pretty slick. 
It kind of reminds me of the, uh, I guess, concept art for the release version of the Oculus Rift, except there's all these holes in it. And the reason for that is the front piece pops off. And it does that so you can actually put the phone in it, which makes sense in the long run. So we got this nice plastic shield to protect your phone while you're using it. And I just had a sudden realization. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but I'll get to that in a minute. Or, well, in a little while anyways. But on the front of it, we can see the optics and how they work. And we see the divided sections and all that for each of the lenses. Okay. And we can also see, well, you probably can't see, but I can see, that I have to clean my optics. I've got hairs, you know, cat hairs and dust all in my optics, so I gotta clean my optics. We have the USB port that this plugs into. It's got a nice little, you know, I guess spring action. That way you can pull it back, plug in your phone, and then slide it forward and then clip it into place. So it, it clips in nice and solid and it fits the phone perfectly, which I sure as hell would hope so since it's specifically designed for one phone and one phone only and not even 100% of that phone. If you have the phone but you're in an area of the world that hasn't had the Gear VR released, you cannot install the software that goes with the Gear VR. So if you import one of these devices from like America or wherever else it might be available at this time, you can't use it. I have no idea. I never understood these windows, the release windows. Never understood it whatsoever. But yeah, anyways. So we got a USB connector here. We got the base clip there. Not terribly surprising. On the side, we have a nice little touchpad, uh, which isn't like really used as a touchpad. Like there's no mouse cursor or anything like that. Uh, for the most part, from what I've seen, it's used for swiping. You swipe forward, you swipe backwards, you tap. And that's pretty much it. As far as I can tell, there's, no, there's not even any swipe up or swipe down. But I bet you all of that is just a limitation of the software. This is just a basic touchpad. Not terribly surprising. We have our back button, which is really nice to have a completely separate and, um, as you can tell, it's got a little raised edge so you can just feel that your finger's on it. Really like that. But it's really good to have a separated back button. That way you're not trying to do some intricate combination of swipes to get back. Mm. We have a volume rocker on the side here, which is really, really good because when you actually attach the phone, the volume rocker sits on the bottom. Oh, but you do have access to it. But since your hand's over here already, it it is nice that they put the volume rocker in there as much as it's not really needed. But hey, it's nice to have all the controls in one centralized location. This right here is the focus. Now, I like this idea. Okay, so this is different than the Oculus Rift. The Oculus Rift, when you adjust the dials on the sides, it moves the entire component away from your face. The lenses, the screen, everything moves everything away from your face. So for people that have glasses like me, you have to use the different lenses that come with the Oculus Rift. Okay, that's great, but that works for three different types of eyes, whereas there's everything in between. So I've never been able to use the Oculus Rift properly. I've always used the normal vision lenses and just squeezed my glasses in there. Just because that, that's the only way I can use the things. The, the B cups, the C cups, they don't work for me. This, however, is far too small for me to actually fit my glasses in. Well, they do kind of fit, but it's completely not comfortable. However, because this focus is different, if you look, I'm holding it by the frame, but if I spin the focus. Okay, you're not seeing that. <laughs> I can barely see it. I can feel it, but I can't see it. Hang on. There we go. That's a little bit more noticeable. You see how the 
case that's holding the phone itself is coming forward, but the lenses don't. The lenses stay put. So the distance between the frame or between the phone and the lenses is what changes. So it changes how the light is refracted so it can accommodate many different types of eyes, all with one set of frames. That's awesome. I can actually wear these things and see it just fine without my glasses, which is great. I really, really, really like that. That is a great concept. I hope Oculus puts that into play because it is a really good idea. I don't know why they didn't think of it before. I mean, one would think, I mean, that you'd think that would be an obvious thing, right? I mean, if the problem is that the distance from the screen to the lenses has to change to accommodate different eyes, wouldn't you make that just variable, like a little knob or something? I don't know. I'm not the Oculus people. I can't say to that. Ah, on the side, we have all of the stuff that goes into it. We got the Gear VR. We got powered by Oculus, and I think that's what makes this thing so so good, as good as it is. Uh, down at the bottom, we have the FCC stuff. We have the Made in Korea by Samsung. Uh, nose hole, nothing terribly fancy. On the inside, whoo, we obviously have the lenses. We have nice, thick, very soft padding, so it's not uncomfortable to wear. It's actually kind of nice to wear. But in there, in that little tiny itty bitty thing is a light sensor and a proximity sensor. Now why it is, is there a light sensor and a proximity sensor? Well, as you've noticed, there's no USB port on the side of this thing. Okay? The only USB connection goes straight into your phone. There's no USB hub, no anything. This thing pulls 100% of its power from your phone, and that's it. There is no way to charge your phone while it's plugged in here. That means that this thing sucks down the power, and it does too. Even with the giant, giant battery that the Note 4 has, it just sucks down the power. I can use, well, I would say 50% of my power in probably about four hours but it's constantly using the screen, constantly using the 3D rendering of the phone. So it's understandable that I can suck up that much power. But it, does, it still lasts a surprisingly long time. I mean, you could watch two or three movies, full movies, in that time. So it's not really a problem. But because it has a light sensor and proximity sensor, once you take it off, it can shut off the phone for you. So it can power everything down and save you juice. And that's always cool. That's a nice addition right there. And I've noticed that before. I've noticed that I didn't really notice the sensors before playing with it. But I did notice it really quickly once I took it off and it bleeped at me. And then I looked at it and realized that the screen was black. But nothing that I did had shut off the screen. You know, what I was doing was still active. I had only taken off the headset for a second. And when I put it back on, boop, the lights came back on and everything was working again. That's pretty cool. I like it. Now, as for mounting it, putting it on your head, as we can see, we have the standard around the back of the head and then around the top of the head, just like the Oculus Rift, except this one's got a solid piece on the top and a solid piece on the back. I do not like the solid pieces. Uh, it makes it difficult to store and difficult to take apart. All right, now the top piece has a little clasp right here that just pops right off. Far as I could tell in the instruction manual, there was no clear way telling me that this actually snaps into place. I thought it was just a hook that you just let rest on there, but I would use it and it would just keep falling off. It, di I didn't, dawn on it didn't dawn on me for two days that I could pull on it and snap it into place. Whatever. The bands, I guess we can call them, that connects everything together, I do not like them either. Because what they are, they're just, they're very solid rubber. As you can see, it's just standing up on its own. They're very solid rubber. Uh, the, the, the 
where it loops just bulges out constantly. It's hard to adjust. And because it's Velcro like this, I mean, that's all it is. It's Velcro and it comes apart like that. I guess it's relatively simple to take apart, but it's really, really annoying to adjust. I mean, especially doing this on the fly, like while it's on your head, it's really hard to do. The side bands are even worse because of how big and bulky they are and how thick their rubber is right here. It's nice and soft there, you know, nice and springy, but because it's such thick rubber right here, it makes it really difficult to adjust to your head. But all in all, that is a minor inconvenience. Yes, I would actually prefer the Oculus Rift's uh, band to be on it, where it's just this little slider thing, so much easier to adjust on the fly than Velcro and very thick rubber. I don't, I have no idea why it's very thick rubber. I mean, it doesn't look any better and it doesn't work any better. So why waste the extra money on the very thick rubber? I guess they're worried about longevity. I mean, this is a release product. This is consumer level product here. This isn't the Oculus Rift, which is a developer's kit. This is consumer level, probably designed to last the life of your phone. Okay, yeah, we're talking two years at that point, but, you know, I, I guess they might have put extra effort into longevity of the device. Possibly. That might also explain the... Uh, hard plastic that makes it almost impossible to put back into the case without completely taking it apart. I don't know. Minor inconvenience, I hardly ever, I hardly ever put it back in its case. I just kind of use it. Now, how does all this work? Well, let's go take a look at the software and find out. So I attempted to record the video of me using the Gear VR, and I just came across one problem after another. I tried using the wireless screen sharing device that I have, but it won't output to my capture hardware, probably HDCP or whatever the HDMI DRM is. Uh, basically, all I get is a pink screen, so that didn't work. Then I tried software that actually gets installed on the phone to record on the phone and while that worked well enough the encoding was problematic it would speed up and slow down certain points which totally destroyed any audio sync that I had set up so what I'll be doing I'll be showing up just clips of the video and screenshots from the video so Let's begin with the home screen, which you should be seeing right now. In the center is the recently accessed applications. On the left is the store and the basically commercial for the Gear VR, even though you already bought one, whatever. On the right is the library, um, how you access thing. You look at what you want to access and then you tap on the touchpad to navigate through the menus you just swipe forward swipe backwards which will navigate left and right uh, tap to select that kind of thing the back button goes back you know obvious kind of things kind of the exactly what one would expect um, there's some really cool apps in here like the oculus cinema that's actually really sweet you can actually watch movies in a cinema uh, or on the moon, which is actually really cool. Uh, but, you know, it, it, that software is a bit limited because it can only access videos that are on the SD card in a very specific location at that. So you can't download something to the local storage of the phone. You can only put stuff in a very specific folder on the SD card so you're limited by storage size there's no network access so I can't access my file shares there is obviously no external storage for a well any phone that I know of I think tablets can do it but phones cannot not that I've ever seen anyways so there's no external storage for it to access so you're extremely limited on what you can put in there 
Now, that's not terribly a bad thing because you're limited to SD anyways. Um, one, my ex, my uh, SD card, <laughs> I'm confusing SDs here. I mean standard def, low def stuff, lower def stuff, um, because the SD card is limited in size and mine is formatted in FAT32. Now, that's the format that the phone gave it after I told it to format the SD card. So, mm. uh, but obviously, FAT32 is limited to, I believe, 4.25 gig. And I don't think I've ever had an HD video that was less than 6 gig. But I ri ripped my own Blu-ray, so. Mm. Uh, now, that's not a problem. That's actually not a problem. As much as you would think that is a problem, it's not because there is actually some pretty serious screen dooring in the Gear VR. The 1440p screen is a higher resolution than the Oculus DK2, but it the screen dooring is more noticeable. Maybe I was looking for it, I don't know, but it is pretty serious screen dooring. And anything over... 480p, anything over DVD quality, you're never going to notice. You probably won't really notice DVD quality because the pixels are just ginormous, relatively speaking. Now, that's not bad. You can still see the movie fairly well. Small text is hard to read, but, you know, movies aren't bad. Um, and if it's designed right, if, like, what you're watching is designed right then it's not really a problem. Though it is incredibly noticeable, and that just points to the Oculus Rift needing a significantly higher resolution than 1440p. So we are talking about something that probably doesn't even exist right now, even in labs. We're probably talking a 4K OLED screen in the Oculus Release Edition, which that's going to be fun uh, but yes, 1440p is not going to cut it for the Oculus because it's incredibly noticeable and kind of causes problems. Now, as for everything else, the the turning your head, the, the gyroscopes, the accelerometers, they work very well in this software. When I turn my head, it turns. When I turn my head the other way, it turns. When I say perfectly still, it stays perfectly still. It doesn't have the drift like it did in the cardboard, which is great. Uh, now, it does have a small problem where if you turn your head a lot, it will drift a little bit. And that's to be expected. Gyroscopes and accelerometers aren't 100%. They can't be. That's why the Oculus Rift has the camera now, because then it can just realign itself on the fly. The phone can't do that. It might be able to do that if it has access to the camera. But one, I'd be a little bit mm, concerned about the privacy there because I'm paranoid. And two, I could imagine that actually programming that would be a bitch and a half because you're not based off of little LED lights like the Oculus Rift. You'd have to be based off of what's around you. And that's completely variable. That changes from house to house. So I don't know. Anyways, um, but it's not bad. If you press and hold the back button, you get this like over menu kind of thing. And one of the options is to reorient yourself. So if you face forward, press and hold the back button and then click the reorient, it goes back to what you were doing with forward reset. So the, they thought of that when they were working with this. And it's actually really cool. Uh, now, my biggest gripe right now is not the hardware, even the screen. The screen's not bad. Um, the biggest gripe is the applications that come with it. They're incredibly limited. Uh, obviously, uh, since it's brand spanking new, the Samsung Store, which is completely separate from the Google Play Store, the Samsung Store is incredibly limited. There are only four pages of apps that are, you know, available. As far as I can tell, they're all free, but also as far as I can tell, they're all demos. 
which kind of sucks. There's no full version of these games, even though I know for a fact that full versions of some of these games exist, like Proton Pulse. I covered Proton Pulse in a previous video uh, when I did it with the Oculus Rift. And you can buy that on the phone in the Google Cardboard store. I have it. I paid for it. So I have the full-blown version of Proton Pulse. However, I can only access the demo version of Proton Pulse from the Samsung because they're completely separate. They act completely different. I cannot access any of my cardboard software from the Samsung. I can also not access any of the Samsung software from the cardboard. This is a severe limitation, especially since this phone is too large to actually use with the cardboard. Yeah, um, I really, 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 really hope that Samsung opens up a little bit and either allows access to the cardboard apps or allows the cardboard software to access the uh, gear itself. I hope. Uh, it would be nice. Uh, hopefully also uh, the... You know, hopefully Samsung also opens up a little bit and lets other manufacturers make their own versions of the Gear VR for other phones. That would make their store a hell of a lot more appealing because that means that more people would be looking at their store. That means they can sell things. But if they limit themselves that only their hardware will work and only the Note 4 will work with the Gear VR. They better as fuck keep that store free. Seriously. <clears throat> Anyways. So, yeah. That's about the gist of what I can really show off. There are some really, really awesome ideas in this. And if they follow through with this, it will be a great thing. But as of right now, the important question is, is it worth the money? And as of right this very moment, no, it is not worth the money. If you've already got the phone, and as I said in a previous video, if you can, if you can use the entirety of the phone, go for it. It is definitely worth the price of the phone if you use all of the phone. If you don't use all the phone, it's not worth it. But if you've already got the phone, and you're a bleeding edge kind of person like I am, then yes, yes, pick this up. It is a really awesome thing. But if you're not a bleeding edge kind of person, or if you don't have the phone, it is most definitely not worth the investment. Not yet. There is more than enough potential. And if they follow through with the potential, it will most definitely be worth the investment. But right now, and right now is all you're guaranteed to get, it is not worth the money. So I would personally, if I, if I wasn't me, if I wasn't a bleeding edge kind of person, I would hold off until either the Samsung store gets better, gets more stuff, gets bigger stuff. Uh, hopefully they become, maybe they'll open themselves up like the gear or the cardboard is where people can make their own apps for it. Um, once it opens up, once it becomes more adaptable, maybe, uh, or probably I would just recommend holding off until the Oculus Rift release edition comes out because that's going to be the most open since anybody will be able to program anything for it. It's not going to be locked down. I don't think it can be locked down. So, yeah. If you're not a bleeding edge kind of person, you might just want to hold off until the Oculus Rift gets released. This is a cool little toy, but it's an incremental step on the path to VR. It's not the destination. It's not even a big step. So that's the, the Gear VR in a nutshell. I apologize for not being able to record this properly, but... I'm limited by the technology. So I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.